And OBSs, they're called, and uh, they are very um, useful in Clarity, very central to the Clarity system in terms of being able to grant rights, to be able of, to lump information together, in this case by departments, and, other, and uh, for other reasons, whether it's reporting, whether it's uh, dividing out the information, or as I said, oftentimes for rights. Uh, and then uh, that's the general page, but then there's the schedule which we'll look at, risk and budget. Those are the ones that we'll look at here in a minute. Now the next tab that I want to look at is team. So we've gone into the team tab, and this is where we set the project team for the project. Uh, in order for anyone to be able to um, charge to work, to be assigned to do work on the project, you need to be a member of the project team. And that shows up on the staff sublink, sub-tab. Uh, and uh, here we then uh, build the project staff, the project team, and it will be comprised of roles and resources. You can see that the first items on here, the first three are roles, and uh, the last one is a name me, a named resource. Uh, also, we see here, besides the resource, we see the project role. So you see in uh, several of the top items that the project role is the same as the resource. That would be natural. Uh, and then uh, going across this uh, uh, table, we see time, and that tells us whether or not that person, that resource, is open for time entry. Well, roles aren't going to charge time, only resources. So, uh, and I am open for time entry on the project as signified by the yellow check mark. Also, booking status, we'll get into in another module where we talk about soft booking and hard booking. And then we have um, the assignment period, the allocation. This role or this resource is allocated to be on this project from this start date to this end date. And at a certain percent of their um, availability. And so that is a key element in this uh, project team staffing page, the, the assigning roles, or allocating roles and resources, when they start, when they finish, and how much of them. And we'll talk a lot more about this in future modules. It's a key thing with respect to both project management and resource management. It is a key intersection of those two bodies of work. The next tab that I want to talk about is tasks. And uh, when you go into the task tab, it automatically defaults to the first sublink, which is task list, which is a flat listing of all the tasks, summary tasks and detailed tasks. And those detailed tasks can be um, either uh, milestones or actual tasks. But I don't generally work with this view very much. I usually work with the next one uh, sublink called Work Breakdown Structure. So if I click on that, we'll see now, I see the, um, uh, the task list in the form of a WBS, the Work Breakdown Structure, in the hierarchical kind of arrangement that we're used to with Work Breakdown Structures. You see in this case there are four phases and uh, they're um, summarized in that they have the plus sign in front of them on each of them, and I can then expand those phases out to see the detail that's, that's in each one. And uh, in this case, if I take the first one, which is planning phase, and click on that plus sign, it expands it out, and I see a couple of details items below it. I see first a project start, and I see a diamond over here, and when I uh, mouse it, it shows that it's a milestone. So that diamond is uh, indicating that that particular task item is a milestone. And then uh, below that, planning phase work, there's one task for the work of the phase, and then there's a planning phase gate. And again, it's a uh, diamond, so it's a milestone. So in this case, I have a summary phase and task that's summary level and three detailed, one start uh, milestone, one uh, task for doing the work of the phase, and then a ending milestone. 
And then in the uh, next phase, uh, they're all pretty much the same in that uh, it's comprised of both a work task and a phase gate and milestone. And the next one is the same thing, uh, a work task and a phase gate milestone. And uh, my recommendation is that when we're working with um, Clarity and doing scheduling in Clarity in the browser, uh, that it is a rather inefficient process as far as I'm concerned to do much detailed scheduling in this environment in, the, in Clarity. It's great for summary level schedules when there's uh, not a very large project, but if we had a rich work plan, it would take a project manager a lot of time. So. But we're, so we're going to deal with this at that level, this uh, summary kind of information level, because uh, this can be useful at certain, uh, for certain types of projects or for certain stages in the maturity of an organization in using Clarity. And we'll talk more about that later. Uh, one other thing to point out in here is that there is a Gantt link down at the bottom of Gantt button, and I can press that and see a nice view of the overall schedule. And that when it comes up, it, it defaults to the summary level. I see a overall project summary task bar, and then I see one bar for each of the phases, planning, design, construction, deployment. And if I click on these, I can open them up and take a look at um, the detail within them in a Gantt chart view. And you see the dependency lines are showing here. So I have a uh, I have a milestone that starts this project, and uh, everything is controlled by that milestone. And then um, uh, from that, it goes into the phase task, and then the, to a gate, the phase gate, and then the next task, uh, uh, phase task, and then that next phase ending gate, and so on down the line. So it's a pretty, pretty uh, interesting information. Next, I want to go into the financial plans tab. And as I said, if you have uh, purchased the financial management module and have implemented it so that uh, resources and projects are financially enabled, uh, then we're able to do financial plans. And uh, the beauty of the financial plans is that they can be done based on the project plan. So uh, it is very easy to um, develop a financial plan, either a cost plan, which is the first sublink, or turn that into a budget plan. But in any case, I can just make those come off of the project plan if I've done a good job of uh, forming a good project schedule. In terms of scheduling, in terms of assignments and estimates, and, uh, and that everything is set up from a financial enablement standpoint so it can be priced out, I'm able to actually just build one new from a resource plan. We'll look at that later. But it's a great thing that we've talked about a little bit before, that we can leverage good information throughout Clarity. Bad information leverages into bad information. If we've got good base foundation information at the project level, then we're able to leverage that uh, continually in other areas like resource management and like financial planning. In the case of financial planning, so we be, there's there's three links under under financial planning, and the, the first one is a cost plan, which is really more like a forecast uh, financial plan. And then you can take your forecast financial plan, called a cost plan, and then submit it for approval. And once it's approved by someone who has budget approval rights, it then becomes the budget plan for the project. So it's a very progressive way of doing this, and uh, um, it then all, of course, feeds into your project information and executive dashboards and portfolio management, and again, all this information being leveraged throughout the system. Just to show you what I mean by a um, cost plan or a uh, financial plan, um, it's just simply 
a uh, 